So here's the stuff I prepared for wiring these gauges. So got the uh, multimeter here. I uh, got a soldering iron with a bunch of uh, solder. I'm uh, gonna need to use one of these T's to split the vacuum line and probably gonna need some of this uh, Teflon tape on this uh, T fitting here to split the oil line as I have an oil pressure gauge and a boost gauge. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, remove the stereo, take apart the center console part and uh, try to get the the power wires for the gauges. So uh, both of these gauges need at least two wires. Uh, that is uh, power and ground. Well, this only takes power and ground and mechanical signal, so that's nothing else. This guy, the uh, glow shift, actually takes uh, three signals, uh, well, three conductors. So power, ground, and uh, headlight. It, uh, the, the, the gauge dims itself once uh, you turn on headlights, which is pretty cool, I think. Well, first I'm gonna test some of the uh, cable, power cables which are more easily accessible before taking apart the dash and then if it doesn't go well I think I'm gonna take apart uh, the stereo, I mean remove the stereo and get the wires from behind the stereo. Somewhere in there I'll find the accessory and a ground wire. Well, actually ground wire is very easy to find anywhere. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. So, in a car in unbutchered form here would be a 12 volt outlet. Um, yeah, kind of would look like this. And you might think this might be the first place you would uh, look for source of power for the gauges. Now, um, yeah, all you need is power and ground. And here is that cable. And uh, in some cars, when you take out the key from the ignition and the car is turned off, there is no power and a cigarette lighter or the 12 volt outlet. Now, is that the case in a Mustang? Well, we can check with the multimeter. Um, this is a uh... okay. So I switched the multimeter to volts. This is not a typical looking volt multimeter. And uh, now I just need to prop this two into power and ground. It doesn't matter the polarity, it will show plus 12 or minus 12. So I only have two wires conductors here. And let's see here. Oh. And there it is. It shows 12 volts when I have um, prongs connected to the 12 volt outlet there. And this is not what you want to see if when you're looking for the power source to wire your gauges because that means you will have power even when there is no key in the ignition. This is what it would look like if you had it wired into this uh, 12 volt outlet, um, which does have enough power um, to power the gauges, of course, uh, but your gauges will be on uh, pretty much forever. I don't wouldn't worry about draining the battery. And if this is what you want to, if you want your glow gauges glowing all the time, so people can see how ricer you are, then yeah, you can uh, leave it like that. I wouldn't really worry about the parasitic draw of these batteries. But anyway, what I want is I want the gauges to come on once uh, that car is uh, turned to accessory. Kind of like that, or kind of like how the stereo gets turned on when I use an accessory. So that's the wire I'm gonna look for and uh, there should be something in there that will allow me to do that. To be able to dig deeper, I need to remove this uh, stereo and center console thing. So, to disassemble the center console and the stereo, what you need to do is uh, unscrew the shifter. You just uh, first rotate the shifter counterclockwise. Once uh, the shifter is removed, uh, what you can do is uh, start pulling up on this center console. Uh, there's no screws, as far as I know. At least when I got the car, there was no screws. You just pull up uh, with both hands on this uh, uh, piece of trim and it's gonna come out. Just unclip it like that, pull it up, and there will be this uh, uh, traction control button thingy here. So you can just remove that as well. 
and then the token is free. Then Meister is only held in by two screws. There's two down here. Actually, the stock one is held in the same way. Yeah, so two screws, uh, get yourself uh, uh, eight millimeter with extended socket just to make it easier and more comfortable to reach in there. And this is what they look like. They have a hex head, but they are not bolts, they're screws. And you can just keep them in a cup holder there. Now, uh, this is a little bit of a finky part. Uh, there are a bunch of clips all around here and you want to try to pry it out evenly without breaking your stereo. Uh, the easiest place to start prying is from the bottom. And if you are able to reach around from the inside, that might be good too. Um, just push it from the back like that. Uh, in my case, yeah, the whole thing is taken apart. So let me just wiggle that out here. And I was able to get the Erizio to pop out. And yeah, so that's how it looks like. And if you look behind the stereo, this is kind of like an Easter egg of my car. There's a display here. Isn't that hilarious? Sometimes the display shows Ford Mustang. I don't know how. Or sometimes it shows Mustang or something. Not right now for some reason. Uh, but it shows outside temperature. This actually is the first place where I want to try to get uh, the, the power and the headlight signal from because as you can see that display is uh, dimming itself when I turn on the headlights. So that's the plug I unplugged from the display there and uh, from the looks of it there are only four wires. <laughs> the, uh, that's uh, not very promising. Uh, I would guess the four wires are power ground and can bus so there's no actual headlight wire that goes to here which makes sense uh, now what I can do is uh, this red cover here you can just pry it off with uh, like a knife or something and it comes out like that there once the cover comes out you can more easily test the pins so uh, what I want to get from the pins is uh, accessory power. I don't want this thing to be turned on all the time. I mean, I don't want the power to be coming from this plug all the time. I just want the power to be coming to this plug when the key is on, which kind of makes sense because the temperature display is only on when the key is on, but also it could be getting information from canvas. So let's test it. And once again, I'm getting 12 volts uh, from uh, two of the pins there. I'm just guessing which ones they are. I messed with uh, all of them and I don't seem to be having an option to get accessory power from this harness. So uh, this harness has the power all the time, just like a cigarette lighter. So I think I'm just going to plug it back into my Easter egg display there and move on to the next harness, which is the stereo itself. Uh, yeah, the stereo too, of course, has an accessory signal. That's how it turns on. And it also should have a headlight switch uh, signal, I think, in there somewhere. It's either decoded or it's wired directly. So this might be a bit of a bad news. Um, I've uh, checked the pins on uh, these two connectors. This big one is the stereo connector. Um, those are uh, the bigger pins are the speakers. The smaller ones are communication and stuff. And those two big ones at the end, those are the power. And uh, so, I only had like four wires here, which are not speakers and not power, and uh, none of those are headlight switch. I also tried to check this climate control uh, header and also didn't find anything that would uh, get a headlight signal. So, um, if you have a stock stereo, uh, I don't think there is a headlight signal going to the stock stereo. Uh, you will probably have to get your headlight signal maybe from the headlight switch itself. Uh, now, for me, I think it's actually still doable 
because I have aftermarket stereo which has a canvas decoder uh, so it, uh, it gets its canvas from this climate control connector and uh, all that kind of data is on the canvas for example as you saw this display only has two I mean four four wires uh, power ground and canvas and from those four wires this display knows when the headlights are on or off so the canvas does know when the headlights get turned on and this canvas is getting decoded in here and then one of those wires coming out from the canvas decoder I think one of those wires from the back is uh, probably headlight signal uh, that headlight signal then goes to this uh, stereo itself so it can dim itself when the headlights are turned on I think that's how it's done I'm pretty sure the reverse light is on the on getting decoded to this canvas so I think the headlight signal is also probably getting decoded in this canvas and sent as a wire not as a data signal so next I'm gonna plug in uh, this harness canvas and I'm gonna start uh, checking the pins coming out of this success I found the headlight wire and that wire is this uh, orange wire coming coming out of the canvas decoder so this orange wire goes here and it's actually split up in two one of them goes to the head unit itself the other one split and goes to the volume knob and the buttons at the bottom here which get illuminated too this harness here also gets um, auxiliary power too and ground so i'm thinking maybe i'll just wire my gauges to this wire here because uh, otherwise they're trying to wire it into here or into here which is kind of tight in there and be more difficult more wires to deal with while over here I'll, all the wires much i need well one extra wire but yeah i need headlight power and ground and might just be able to get them out of this harness here which is cut just connects to the bottom of the bottom see there um yeah so to do that i'm gonna try to use a soldering iron from a 12 volt outlet in the car and see if it has uh, enough juice to power it. Did you know that this 12 volt outlet is actually a cigarette lighter? Back in the old days, people, or should I say savages, used to smoke inside cars and these things would work as cigarette lighters, which would have like an element that gets heated up so hard hard enough to light a cigarette and um, and yeah if it gets hot enough to be able to light a cigarette I think my soldering iron should be able to get hot enough to melt some solder I got the boost gauge wired not soldered in there when you turn the key on the gauge turns on uh, that's all good and stuff it's uh, very janky right now but um, then I took a look at the glow shift harness for the gauge and realized it doesn't have three wires it actually has four wires so it needs accessory power which is this power and it also needs constant power uh, yeah the constant power that you would get from like a 12 volt outlet right there or from that uh, thick yellow wire there so it's uh, like these wires are not enough it needs more wires than this uh, so yeah then I have to rethink this I should have planned ahead I thought there was also only three wires power ground and headlight it's uh, power ground accessory and headlight so this was uh, very uh, stupid I've uh, butchered up this uh, harness right there and then just uh, taped it back up. Uh, then I butchered another harness um, at, the, at the canvas box right there. And that's where I have uh, wired up these two harnesses to these two gauges. I decided not to solder them yet because I'm planning to get uh, matching uh, gauges. Right now this is uh, um, glow shift and this is... Uh, Aliexpress special. Um, so let's uh, flip the ignition switch and hope I don't blow the fuse. Okay.
that's cool nice so right now um, there is uh, no sensor connected it's just the power and I like uh, let's see here there we go this is kind of similar color I mean if it looks different on the camera well that's because it is <laughs> Uh, but hopefully it's somewhat close to what I have uh, in my gauge cluster. Uh, okay, now well, that's pretty cool. Let's see if I turn on the headlight. Oh, yeah, I don't know if it's visible, but yeah, it gets dimmed uh, slightly. Uh, yeah, and I didn't blow any fuses, and I think uh, there's no fires, so that is a uh, success. Uh, for now, I will... Um, yeah, start reassembling things back together, tidying things up with uh, uh, zip ties, and I'll leave, just leave these two harnesses dangling up here uh, for when I have the, the vent gauge pod printed. Hopefully, hopefully tomorrow. All right. In case it wasn't obvious, at the time at the time of making this video, I actually don't have a finished printed uh, gauge cluster pod bezel vent thingy. Uh, this is the best thing I have at the moment. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and this is uh, very exciting. Uh, I feel very motivated now to finish that uh, bezel. I've been discouraged with multiple failures, uh, but yeah, they're, they're in there. Um, the color is off. Um, I guess they're not the same brand. Uh, we'll get glow shift brand I want them to match the glow shift one actually does look more uh, crisp more defined um, but I mean I don't actually mind it this is this is actually not so bad um, they are RGB so you can pick in different colors or you can pick uh, this uh, rainbow thingy um, maybe there's actually even a way to program the color I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like that sweep right there. Actually, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the timing of the sweep is not the same as uh, the cometer. Uh, this one does it first. So uh, this might be it for today. I uh, We'll still need to do the wiring of the, or yeah, wiring of the sensor itself. I will install the sensor, wire it, and also we'll run the vacuum line uh, up to this gauge, and uh, we'll have that. Uh, we'll be doing that next. car in the shop and uh, next uh, thing to wire is uh, not this <sighs> plug in this T into this uh, pressure sensor and this uh, signal wire and then wire it through the firewall the oil pressure pump is somewhere in the front there the oil pressure goes through the filter and then goes through this pipe here and into the block and that's where I'm gonna tee off the oil pressure uh, sensor of the switch so this is actually also oil pressure switch uh, but it's all more like uh, binary so it's only on off if there's oil pressure or there's nothing uh, so I'm gonna keep it here tee it off and have uh, two sensors coming out of here from my research online, uh, this thread is, uh, I think, a quarter inch NPT, and uh, the sensor 
that came from uh, Glowshift is uh, one eight NPT. So this should uh, thread in there and uh, split it off into two. At least uh, that's the idea. <laughs> well, that was funny. I was not prepared for it. I expected some oil to come out of there. Uh, just I put down some rags, but it's actually quite a bit of oil coming out of there. So be prepared if you do this kind of thing. There's a bit of oil in there. Uh, yeah, next what I'm gonna do is uh, put on some of this pipe goo on this thread here and get this tea in there. Alright, and there it is. Uh, both sensors are in there. The more expensive sensor is on the bottom. Um, yeah, so this is the wire for the pressure switch. And it has this conduit here. And this is the wire for the Glow shift sensor and I'm thinking maybe I can route it through the same conduit at least up to that point so here I was planning out the routing uh, my plan was to have the cable go up here and into this grommet and into inside of the car unfortunately I don't think this grommet goes inside the car I think this grommet is for the windshield wiper motor and I think it's all just stays in here. I tried to open up this grommet, I tried to put cables through there and see if I could reach anything and I was unsuccessful. Um, then I was trying to see if I could uh, get through anywhere else. I've seen people get through the fender, like somewhere around here, uh, but uh, didn't want to go that far. Uh, then I found this hole and I found the inside of the hole looks like insulation. Then I pushed the cable through and I saw it come through on the other side. And... <laughs> there it is. It's actually easier to see when the light is off. Um, so that's a reasonable distance away from the gauge cluster, so I think that's the hole I'm gonna use. So the hole was of course covered up with this grommet, I just cut a hole in it and you can just push the cable through this hole and later I will also need to put the vacuum line through this hole as well and then close up that grommet hole. Uh, tidied up the harness somewhat so there it is coming from the bottom and I've uh, tied it together with this harness here and it goes up there and through that grommet um, I'm not gonna do a vacuum line today probably uh, I'm probably just gonna try to finish up the interior and uh, maybe do the vacuum line some other time this is actually kind of hilarious and sad. Well, just like always, things don't go as planned. Uh, this uh, doesn't reach. Yeah, so uh, the cable, how it's routed, does not reach the gauge. So I need to reroute it instead of uh, going through the long way around up there and all the way, all the way around. I think I'm gonna get up here, follow this harness then get up here and then get to this grommet this extra space saved should be able to be make it enough to reach the gauge itself it is eight o'clock and i finally was able to route it this is actually not how i planned it uh, and i wouldn't say this routed this is more like just make do with what is happening to me right now uh, this cable is just kind of just like dangling here Oh, actually I should probably tie it up here so it doesn't touch the exhaust manifold 
and doesn't burn at all. That would be devastating. Well, not really devastating. It's like a five dollar cable, but still, it would be super annoying. Um, yeah, uh, let me just try to tie this up as fast as possible. All right, so now the final test. I'm gonna prime the oil system of the car without starting the engine. And uh, so once the oil system is primed, there should be uh, oil light that is gonna go off here. And uh, this oil pressure gauge might start showing some oil pressure. Um, so to do that, you just hold down the clutch and you hold down the gas pedal and start cranking. Uh, once you have oil pressure, you can just uh, release the clutch and the car will stop cranking or release the key. All right. Oh, oil pressure is building. Nice. Oh. Haha. <laughs> okay, so I guess uh, they're working. Now let me check for it leaks now. I checked for leaks and I think it's fine. I don't see anything. But then again, it wasn't running very long. The pressure was pretty low anyway. Uh, but it's uh, good enough for me to call this a success and, uh, and go home. And that's what the gauge looks like in action. I bought another glow shift gauge, gonna have matching gauges. And uh, yeah, so at idle on cold oil, that's how much oil pressure I'm getting. When you rev up the engine, you get more oil pressure. As the oil warms up, you'll have less oil pressure. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, working pretty good. Uh, I think this project has been a success so far. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.